Hi everyone, today I'm going to be reviewing Love and Hip Hop New York Season 6 Episode 2. We start an episode off with Kari B. And right off the bat, I can tell she is going to be a lot this season. She's letting us know, you may know me, I am that annoying girl from Instagram. And I'm like, you know what, you gotta have respect for somebody like that. She knows that she's an annoying person and she's not trying to play dumb about it. Then I was looking at her in her confession, I'm like, these producers is wrong. Because she clearly has lipstick on her teeth. And if I recognized that she had lipstick on her teeth, they should have recognized that she had lipstick on her teeth and said something. But no, they're just going to let her be on national TV with lipstick on her teeth, going on about whatever she was talking about. Then she got to talking to DJ Self because, you know, they've been hooking up now every once in a while. But, you know, she ain't trying to go there no more because she got a dude that treats her right. But her dude's in jail. And I'm trying to figure out how is it that your man that is in jail is treating you right? I mean, he can't take you nowhere, can't give you nice things. Not to say that that's treating you right, but he's behind bars. So what good is he doing you, like telling you he loves you, lifting you up and whatever you're doing? Another question. Do we have a one, at least one stripper quota for these love and, French, uh, love and hip hop franchises? Because, you know... Love and hip la the last season, Love and Hip Hop um was in Atlanta. We had the homegirl with the pink hair, it was a Jessica Dime, she was a stripper. Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, we had um Willie's wife Chandra, and now on here we have Kari B. So is it now that we had to have at least one stripper on each franchise? I need to know these things, but I can already tell, like I said, that Kari B, she is going to be a lot. Rashida Ali sits down with Lexi and Mo, and she has some words for Mo like, "You was being very unprofessional at that cipher. You should, you and Bianca shouldn't have got into it. That shouldn't have never happened." But Mo was like, "Well, when else was I supposed to confront her?" And I'm like, "How about not confronting her alone? How about leaving well enough alone? Because clearly, this girl does not care about busting people upside the head. See, last time you got into it, the girl we had no, when you was jumping in business wasn't yours." He got bust upside head and stitches. How about just just leaving the situation alone? But she's like, you my manager. You you should have an opinion on what I'm doing. But Rashid is like, if I'm going to be managing you, this is my business. Because this is looking bad on me and my news business as manager. Yes, I was a Celeta expert, whatever that is, last season. But now I'm trying to get into the managerial and you know, role. And I'm going to need y'all to sit down. So at one point, Rashida was like, you know what, Mo, you being too much. I'm going to sit here and talk to this girl because clearly you are not understanding where I'm coming from. So Mo tried to leave. She's like, you know what, maybe we shouldn't even be working together. But Mo comes back like, hey, you can't be doing that. See, maybe this is why their last few managers haven't been, you know, working out. Because Mo looked like she got a little mouth on her. And Rashida is looking like she's the kind of person who's not going to take all that mouth that's coming her way. So we had this little cute scene, scene with Rich Dollars and his daughter. He, she's coming to stay for the summertime, and he got a little few rules. You know, normal rules. Make sure your bed is, you know, clean. Take out the trash. Wash dishes. But she's like, um, take it out the trash is man business. You know, I'll make my bed and clean up after myself. But you know, like, I got some rules for you too. I don't want you having none of your women's up in the house while I'm here. And I'm gonna need you to step back on your little was it forty forty liquor thing you got on. I'm like. How long has he been working on this thing? Because I know he was talking about this liquor little thing when he was on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. And I'm clearly this has been like a good two years he's been working on it. Now, I know it takes a while to get your business together. But remember, he was talking about this business the last season of Love and Hip Hop New York. So we didn't have an Atlanta and a Hollywood and we didn't circle back on to New York. So when is this business going to get together is what I'm trying to figure out. But... Richie's like, okay, I'm going to put my creep ways, you know, behind me because I have my daughter here and I'm trying to set a good example for her, whatever that example is, because she, she should already know that her dad is a creep and he just ain't going to stop creeping it anytime soon. So we had this little scene with Tara and Amina. Tara's out there working out and Amina shows up because she wants to know where they man is it. Yes, I said they man. Because at this point, they basically sister wives. Peter's both of they man and probably somebody else's man at this time too because we are talking about Peter Guns. And, you know, she's like, is Peter been staying at your house? She's like, I don't know where Peter been staying at. Shouldn't you know that? I mean, shouldn't you know where our man is since he's married to you but he be coming over my house? I mean... We supposed to know where our man is at. That's basically what the conversation is kind of sounding like. But, you know, Tara, she's on her high horse. Like, I don't care where Peter spends his time with. 
but I do care that he lies to me. And I'm like, hasn't Peter been lying to you like your whole entire relationship? So why are we surprised that he is still lying? This is what I'm going through. And then she's like, well, you came in while me and Peter were together and you swooped on in. So don't get mad when the next woman swoops on in claiming to love Peter. Then they have words. Then Amina walks out like, I know he still loves you, but I'm like... She was like, I mean, um, Ty said, if he loves me, why are you still here? She's like, because I'm fighting for him. So, you out your mouth said you were fighting for a man who was in love with someone else. Like, if y'all together and y'all love each other, y'all shouldn't have to fight to be together. It should just come naturally. Why are we fighting over a man who loves somebody else? Like, I thought, you know, Amina had, like, got some sense last season because she was like, I'm not finna put me and my daughter through this. I'm gonna go to Germany and everything gonna be alright. But then she let Peter smooth, swoop on in and, you know, do that baby, baby, please don't leave me. I'm a changed man. But, like, clearly he's not changed because you already know he's still sleeping with Tara because, you know, that's y'all suits the wives and all that stuff. But, like, why are we fighting, like, they look so, I don't want to say stupid, but this is making them look very desperate and stupid as women. Like, how come we haven't, you know, collectively got together and realized that Peter is a low down dirty dog? So, Yandy sits down with Bianca because she has some words for her, like, you acting several foods at that cypher the other night. And y'all know Yandy, she ain't about acting food. She's like, I'm all about my money, and if you want me to manage me, you can't be out in the streets acting like this. I already got too much on my plate. My husband, he finna to go to jail. I'm trying to get business together. I got four babies. Or was it three? She got like three or four babies at home that she got to worry about. She can't be worried now. Bianca out there acting the fool. But Bianca's like, you know what? I wasn't even trying to go there. I was sitting there minding my business. That girl came over to my space and got me yapping off at the mouth. Me being who I am, I couldn't help myself, and I had to yap back. But Ben is like, if you want to work with me, boo-boo, I'm going to need you to cut that back and cut it back now. This whole little scene with DJ Self and his girlfriend was a mess, and here's why. He is on the phone talking to Cardi B. They done hooked up, uh, hooked up in the past, and you know, and I guess he's trying to hook back up some more. But, you know, she's all about her boyfriend as jail, who's treating her well. Anyways, her girlfriend, his girlfriend comes in, so you know he gotta get off and get out and fa FaceTime with her. So he don't wanna get caught. He gets confronted because she didn't find a ring in the bathroom. He said, "I don't know where the ring came from. I don't know, is it yours?" He's like, "This ain't my ring. Where did it come from?" There is like a small list of people the word ring it came from. He claims it was the maid's ring. You know, okay, I can get that maid took a ring off because she wanted to clean. Maybe we got to doing something else and forgot. Okay, that could happen. But she wants to play detective and like, you know what? I'm going to post this on Instagram and ask my friends to ask their friends to ask their friends. So I can find whose ring this is. He don't want her to do that because he knows who ring it is. He's just not going to tell her. He's going to play dumb. Then at one point, he says he's not cheating. But he says, I'm not cheating at the house. That's dumb. That's what hotels are for. Then he's like, she's always accusing me of cheating everywhere I go. Yes, I've done things in the past, but I ain't, you know, she don't know about it. It's like, yes, I'm cheating, but how dare you, you know, accuse me of cheating. This is the thing that we're going on. It's like, yes, I'm cheating, but how dare you accuse me of cheating. Then he was like, okay, yeah, I've done some things in the past that I ain't really proud of. You know, I'm going to tell her one day, but today's not it. He's saying this to the cameras, in front of producers, in front of sound men, you know, to the world. And this is what I've come to the conclusion. It could be three to four things that he's going to get out of this. One, that he don't plan on being that with her by the time the show comes to the end. So he don't really care if she finds out. Two, he don't care about her feelings at all. It's like, okay, yes, I cheated. Now what we're going to do? Like, I can't take it back. Or it could be three. Man, I just messed up. Y'all knew how it is. I was out of the club. I was drunk. It could be these three things. He doesn't plan on being with, being with her. 
he don't care about her feelings or he just gonna try to be like, you know, do that Jedi mind trick. Well, you was accusing me cheating so much, I just decided to go out there and do that. These are things like, this is what I go through my mind when both men and women beat on these shows and cheat on their significant other. This is what I'm, how I'm thinking once, you know, the person they're with sees this. These are the excuses they're going to come with. Either they not, I'm the only plan with being with you when the season's over. I don't care about your feelings or do the Jedi mind trick. So Remy Ma tells Papu she didn't ask Rashida Ali to help her with the wedding. And he is not feeling it at all. He's like, you know what? She wasn't even there for you. Like, come to see you right and you write nothing while you was in prison those, you know, six years, five months, and four days, or however long it was. Like, she didn't even call. I mean, she didn't receive no, you didn't, she didn't come see you. She didn't write you no letters. None of that. And on top of that, I don't trust her or the people that she hangs with. I'm looking out for you, boo. You know, last time you had a friend and they brought a friend around and that ended, that ended you up. You ended up going to prison because you didn't get into it with a friend of a friend. I'm not trying to have you go down that road. Rashida Ali is shiest as heck and so are her friends. He didn't say that, but that is what I'm reading between the lines. Then he was like, you know what? You ain't been getting along with my daughter DJ. She used to look up to you. You love her. She loved you. But you ain't really been getting on. But you know, remember I was like, she turned 18 and now she thinks she grown. She got a little lip on her. You know, we ain't really seeing eye to eye on that. So they decide to have a little family meeting. It's Remy, it's Papoose, and they two kids. His daughter, her son. And right off the bat, they noticing that the daughter DJ got a, like, she got, like, her eye and got the blood vessel in her eye and got busted. So clearly she didn't got knocked in the hair in the eye region. And it's like, you know what? You know, I'm gonna need you to calm down with all this fighting. You getting in fightings left getting to fights left and right. You always saying, Well, I didn't start it, but like you in situations where you're getting into the fights. See, that's what happened to me. I was getting into fights left and right. The next thing you know I just shot somebody in the stomach and I was in prison. I'm gonna need you to stop with all that. And it was like, you know what, we finna to have this wedding. You gonna be my maid of honor. You gonna walk me down the aisle. We gonna get this family back in order. I can't be having y'all cheering out here acting all kind of way. Y'all gonna listen to us and listen to us. Like I said, don't be out here acting crazy. Don't be out here act, getting into fights. Because one day you can get into a fight and you may not, you get knocked out and you may never wake up. So Peter finally realizes that having two women that he is sleeping with living in the same building isn't such a good idea. So he's talking to, to Tara at her apartment and he's like, she wants to know, or does Amina know that they're not together? He's like, she knows that we're not together. She just doesn't know that we're not together. I'm like, that's the same thing. Did you realize that you said the same thing or you just thought Tara wouldn't catch it? But I caught it. So she's like, you know what? I called Amina over to the house because we need to find, get some things straightened out. He's like, oh, here we go. And they decided to tag team him with questions. I was like, okay, y'all want the correct answer and no lies? This is what you need to do. And I about fell out with the look he gave to her. Which is like, yes, me and Peter are still sleeping together. He's like, that wasn't part of the plan. You weren't supposed to tell her that. And I was like, oh, mm -mm. Then she's like, yeah, Peter told me that you was a mistake that went too far. And she's like, I was a mistake? I went too far? You don't love me? And this is where I had to rewind like six, seven times. Because she took her right hand to slap him. But he was rubbing the um, right side of his face. So I was like, that doesn't work. Because if you're slapping somebody, you are going to get their opposite side of the face. You really got his left side. But I like, I kept on rewinding it. And I don't know if she like slapped his left side of the face or as the way he was facing, it was like she got the front on and then the right side. Because like this is like it was it went so fast and moving so fast and I couldn't I kept on rewinding to see what I was like. I was like, that doesn't look like that should have happened. Because like if I hit some if I hit right here, I'm not gonna be feeling rubbing this side of the face because I got hit right here. That don't make sense. But like, okay. And it's like, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm pregnant. I'm like, really? You pregnant? Okay. 
And then she's like, I can't believe Tara. I let her come and live in her and live in our building. I should have known. She just came here because she wanted to break me and Peter up. And I was like, hold up. You let her live in y'all building. You let her. See, I, I kind of got what she was saying. Like, okay, I was okay with her living in our building so he could be close to our kids. But you couldn't, like, stop her. Long as her check clears and her background check clears, she ain't had no felonies and all that good stuff. You know, she can move wherever she wants to, but it would be, you know, at a, it would been decent to ask, like, hey, are you comfortable with me living in this building as well? But, you know, I kind of got what she's saying, but, you know, maybe she worded it wrong, but, like, this whole little, like, love triangle between them, it's very, very exhausting. I'm like, maybe they got all the answers they needed and they finally realized, but here's been lying to us, but, like, I don't know how they don't know since he's been lying from the beginning. So, that was the gist that went on. If I left anything out, by all means, leave a comment or video response. And like always, I want to thank my subscribers and the people who watch my videos. I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.